23 under article 991 111-1 and 123-1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda directed the Minister of Education and Sports to assume the role of the lead agency in the process of the Uganda's bid to co-host AFCON 2027 alongside Kenya and Tanzania. The football federations of Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda all declared interest to co-host AFCON 2027 alongside Kenya and Tanzania. On behalf of the Minister of Education and Sports and Government, we submitted a sovereign guarantee to the Confederation of African Football in April 2023 as part of the requirement in the bidding process. We were informed that the government of the United Republic of Tanzania and the, Repub and the Republic of Kenya had similarly complied with the requirement as guided by CAF. On 27 September 2023, the CAF Executive Committee awarded a hosting right for the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations 2027 to the East African Joint Pamoja Bid by Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. The African Cup of Nations is the most prestigious football tournament on the continent. It's a privilege and an honor for East Africa, including Uganda, to host a tournament. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, this is the first time the region will host an international con continental sporting event of that magnitude in the history of three partner states since the inception of AFCON in 1957 in Sudan. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is also the first time the East and Central Africa Sekafa Football Rich Zone will host the AFCON 2020 in 47 years since Ethiopia last hosted in 1976. The AFCON tournament has been in West Africa, Southern and Northern African region, but not the East African region. As a country and at large board of East Africa, we are blessed with this good news and opportunity to host the AFCON 2027 football competition. This is a great milestone in fostering spirit of cooperation in East African community. While the decision to pull resources and efforts was strategic indeed, three countries are still faced with challenges including inadequate infrastructure, sports infrastructure, and funding against other competing priorities. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the AFCON 2027 requires a substantial investment in infrastructure for the games, accommodation, air transport, water, and road transport accessibility. These are expected to yield significant dividends in the short, medium, and long term. We note that in March 2017, Uganda was able to host one day World Athletics Cross Country Championship in Kampala, and the report from the sports consultants firm that undertook research shows that the direct economic impact on the championship stood at shilling US dollars 2,622,000 overall. Furthermore, we also know that US dollar 1.3 million out of the total expenditure of US dollar 1.96 million was spent on the local suppliers, among others. Right on those speaker and colleagues, the AFCON 2027 is not just about football, but is also an opportunity to showcase the beauty of East Africa to the rest of the world. Many tourists are expected to flock the region known for its diversity, culture, landscape, wildlife, and vibrant cities to mention but a few. Right on, speaker and colleagues, Uganda made a commitment to the Confederation of African Football to undertake and ensure the following are implemented. Number one, execution of government guarantees to host AFCON 2027 submitted to CAF. Number two, sign off and submission of the host, the host agreement after CAF bid declaration. Number three, Payment of the costing fees amounting to US dollars 30 million to CAF before February 2025. Each country is required to pay 30 million US dollars. That totals 90 million as a requirement of CAF. Number four, construction of two additional stadiums to host AFCON, namely Akiba Stadium in Lira 
and Buhinga in Fort Foto or Hoima City Stadium in Hoima. Number five, completion and of the renovation and upgrading of Mandela National Stadium. Number six, securing all required funding for smooth logistical operations and delivery of the game. Honorable colleagues, the Minister of Education and Sports is committed to the realization and delivery of AFCON 2027 to showcase the potential of our country while at the same time developing the infrastructure required to leave behind an existing legacy for the country. I want to take the opportunity this upon the on behalf of the Ministry of Education and Sports to extend my appreciation to His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda and the President of the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency the President of the United Republic of Tanzania. We also want to extend our gratitude to Cabinet the Right Honourable Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honourable Deputy Speaker of Parliament, in its entirety, the Minister of State, myself, and the technical team in the Minister of Education and Sports, National Council of Sports, the Federation of Uganda Football Association, and among others. Honourable colleagues, friends of East Africa, I want to say I am proud to be among those who have made the history of on, being... On, are you reading a statement? I'm reading a statement, right on the speaker. <laughs> right on the speaker, I want to conclude by thanking you in a special way for being part and parcel of the entire process while in Cairo. Can we clap for the right on the deputy speaker? You led us, and I want to say thank you. May God bless you abundantly. I say all this for God and my country. The statement is signed by the Minister of Education and Sports, the First Lady of the Republic of Uganda. I thank you so, so much, Honorable Colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Peter Obanga, and congratulations. And uh, I saw you spending three place nights so with Honorable Magogo and uh, the team from National Council of Sports and FUFA. You guys did a wonderful job. You know, colleagues, one thing I came to understand me, I thought you just submit a bid as a country, and uh, people look at your beauty, and they offer it to you. I have come to understand that if we want to benefit from this, from getting such a, you know, big tournament coming to Uganda, we must build relationships. Build relationships, we must give capacity to our entities, from National Council to FUFA to the ministers, you know, to find, uh, uh, anyway, I, I don't know which better language, but at least a minister should be able, when he stands up to speak, he has five delegates around him. We saw one minister, when he was standing up to walk, half of the delegates were moving with him. Now we said we are we are not contesting with this one. So what we did, we, Moses, we, oh no, Gogo had to advise us that we have to tag along this one so that he supports us. Without him, we are not winning. When I came to ask why, he said his country had given him capacity to build the relationship in the footballing fraternity. But when you come, you don't have a network, and you expect to win it out of nowhere, it's extremely difficult. But I also saw the determination of a president uh, uh, <coughs> who could even, you know, who spoke to most of these presidents in the region begging, saying, please support us. I was very happy, uh, Mr. Rope, one of the people whom we were coordinating with and uh, encouraging us, asking us the updates, the read of opposition. So this became, you, you know, it, it really gave us impetus to even work harder, to find we are all united uh, as a country. So. Uh, this is a very big achievement for the country, and I hope now the real work starts. We don't just celebrate winning a bit, <laughs> not knowing we must deliver. So, uh, as I had guided, uh, let us also receive the motion, and then we have a debate for both of them at work. Item number three on the order paper. Motion for a resolution of parliament to pay tribute to successful East Africa Pamoja bid comprising Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya for hosting the Africa Cup of Nations. Af Can I have a room, Santa?
Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I move a motion for a resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to the governments of Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania for the successful joint bid to host the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations 2027. Moved under Rule 56 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament. Whereas the African Cup of Nations in the premier international men's football competition in Africa, organized by the Confederation of African Football, and is held every two years, recalling that the African Cup of Nations has been held since 1957, and participating national men's team play a qualifying tournament in which the first and the second best team in each qualifying group participate in the final tournament, which is held in a country determined by the executive committee of the Confederation of African Football through a rigorous bidding process. Aware that the football federations of Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, with the support of the governments of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, presented a joint bid, the East African Pamoja bid, for the right to host the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations in 2027. Noting that the East African Pamoja bid faced a strong and relentless competition from the other African countries that sought to host the final tournament, including Botswana, Egypt, and Senegal. Appreciating that the East African Pamoja bid was evaluated by the Confederation of African Football as the best bid and the right to host the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations 2027 was granted to Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Recognizing that the support from the government of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania was crucial in the success of the East African Pamoja bid and demonstrated the commitment of the government of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania to meet the costs associated with hosting the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations 2027. Cognizant of the benefits that will accrue to Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania from hosting the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations in 2027, including raising the global profile of East Africa, increasing the investment in sports infrastructure and social services, increased revenue and stimulating sports development as an economic and community development tool. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, one, Parliament collectively congratulates the governments of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania for the successful joint bid to host the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations 2027. And two, Parliament collectively congratulates the Football Federations of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania for the successful bid to host the 36th edition of the African Cup of Nations in 2027. I beg to move. Thank you. Is the motion seconded? Yes. Uh, Honorable Mushemeza, uh, Honorable um, Kayemba Solo, uh, Honorable Namuga Goretti, Honorable Miringo, Honorable Uda Orero, Honorable Muevesa, the Government Chief Whip, uh, Honorable Aran Sewanyana, and many other colleagues. Yes. By majority members of the House. Honorable Asanta, would you like to speak to your motion in five minutes? Honorable Asanta is our vice captain for the parliamentary sports team. Manager of the Uganda Sports uh, Parliamentary Club. Thank you so much. Right, Honorable Speaker, I would like to say 
this is the biggest event that is going to happen to Uganda and the sisters' countries. But, right honorable speaker, there was really widespread excitement when the president of the Confederation of the African Football unveiled Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania as the best evaluated bidder to us, the AFCON 2027. Right honorable speaker, most Ugandans, if not all, were equally excited to witness our own president and the first lady who also happened to be the minister of education when they were receiving their award. Equally, the presidents of Kenya and Tanzania. What a beautiful and exciting sight, right honorable speaker, for the three East African countries to be in charge of the Afghan Games in 2027. Right honorable speaker and honorable colleagues, this is the first time in the history of AFCON that Uganda and the sister countries of Kenya and Tanzania will be hosting. Before this bid, 18 out of the 84 countries had hosted, but none of the East African countries has ever hosted. So this time round, right honorable speaker, we have got a chance and we are really very happy for this opportunity and it comes with a lot of significance to us. First of all, we are now, and we have joined the light countries that have hosted Afcon. And right honorable speaker, our profile as a country will be raised by hosting this game. And we shall automatically qualify in the Afcon 2027. We are already uh, a team which has qualified. Secondly, right honorable speaker, the AFCON comes with a lot of strategic and inclusive investment and benefits to the sports sector and the economy at large. First of all, right honorable speaker, it will give us an opportunity to bring infrastructural development in roads, sports sector, and we have been looking towards this as a parliament of Uganda. Many colleagues have stood up here and spoken and encouraged government to build uh, st stadiums across the regions that we have in this country. I was so happy that this time round, Akibwa, Kacheka will have the opportunity to be built as regional stadiums and many more, right honorable speaker. Two, right honorable speaker, another benefit that will accrue from this is that Uganda, having got this opportunity to us, it will also bring for us that chance to develop our training facilities. And if they are developed up to that international standard, many teams will be coming here to train for one month, two months, and so many others. Right, Honorable Speaker, before I move further, allow me to thank the government of the three countries, starting with our own president, for the support and commitment that they have put in place right from the beginning. Two, allow me to thank our own uh, leadership, the Speaker of Parliament, and the Deputy, right Honorable Speaker. It was again exciting to see you, as our Deputy Speaker, also receiving the award. Thank you very much. Also, on a special note, I want to thank FOFA. I want to say this with a very excited heart that FOFA, you have really done us proud. Together with the other federations in East Africa, first of all, for coming together for that insightfulness to come together and put a joint bid. No wonder unity is strength. And we are here very happy that we have our own president with the, some of the technical team seated here, Honorable Moses Magogo. We want to salute you and your team for everything that you have put in place and say thank you for bringing us this far. Our regards to education represented here by Honorable Ogwan, thank you so much. Complete Our regard for everything you have done. Then, finally, right Honorable Speaker, we have immense benefit. The confidence that this has brought to our country, 
the tourism, the exposure, the talent identification earlier on. It has been the East Africa and North African countries that when you even look at the Premier League, you don't find our East African uh, players. But this is a chance, right, Honorable Speaker, for our sportsmen and in future, the ladies to also shine at a global level. And all the focus will be turned to this country. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have won the bid. We are the odds. And I want to encourage all of us to support this motion. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. And uh, colleagues, don't ask for more time. Once it's cut off, we give others a chance. So we shall start with Honorable Kabrindi, followed by Honorable Kayemba uh, Joffrey Salo, Honorable Catherine Damire, and Honorable Mshemi Zaira. Uh, thanks very much, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. I think whenever an opportunity of this nature comes to a country, the country at large benefits from the lowest person to the highest, from a businessman, to politicians, and to the government at large. Let me speak, before I proceed, let me join my colleagues in thanking His Excellency, the President of Uganda, and his counterparts, the Ministry of Education, the FUFA leadership, the National Council of Sports, and other stakeholders, I cannot forget the private sector. I will come to that. Without security in the country, as one of the conditions, without the private sector coming into play to construct the hotels, as one of the conditions, we wouldn't have won that bid. The commitment of the president, which is not for the first time, has led us to what we are going to see. Right on, will speak. Between 23rd and 26th November 2007, we hosted Chogam. The outcome of Chogam is we are still using it as a ladder for achieving more. When we come to 26 March 2017, we hosted the World Cross Country Championship. And one of the conditions before we went to Monarch to win the bid was view of the infrastructure. And we used the existence of the hotels that we are putting in place for Chogam, and also, of course, first value of Kampala to convince our colleagues. So you can see that whenever you win a bid, it gives you the opportunity for even bidding for further. And I think, to me, when I heard about this news as the former minister, and I looked at the infrastructure, and mark you, it is AFCON 2027 not 2015. There is Afcon 2023 now, 2015, but 2027. 2025. I mean 2025. Mm -hmm. This gives us an opportunity to prepare ourselves in terms of infrastructure, in terms of finances, in terms of the team itself. And here I want to say, right on of speak, that we want to call upon our society to stop their negative comments. Instead of encouraging the team and the all other stakeholders, they will look for negative state sentiments on how the government cannot afford. You have heard the statement from the Minister of Education when we hosted the White Cross Country Champion. Thank you. Honorable Kayemba, well done, Honorable Kabrindi, and thank you for your contribution to the sports sector. Uh, thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. As one of the famous footballers this country has ever got and now turned into a football agent, I want to join the countrymen to welcome the bid. Right, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank all people that were involved in this. This is a historical milestone to our country. However, winning the bid and preparing AFCON, they are totally different. In 2019, Cameroon won the bid, but due to its unreadiness, the bid was, uh, the, the AFCON was taken to Egypt. So when I look around and I realize the situation our country is in, especially with the sports facilities, I get some anxiety. 
and they say if the status quo remains the same, the things that we would not, ask, we would not want to happen, that happened in Cameroon, to come in our country. I speak this, right honorable speaker, because of the situation, especially with our infrastructures and specifically the stadiums. When you look at uh, Nambole Stadium we have, it's uh, under renovation. But the renovation alone has taken more than two years. That snail speed, imagine constructing new stadiums in this period. What I request the government is to use professionals. Instead of using now, we can give a contract to this one. We need to use professionals in this to give our country the mileage it needs. Right, Honorable Speaker? Uh, well, like it, our, our practice, as usual, I will specify Chogam. When we go to Chogam, the individual hungry and most government officials saw it as a cash bonanza. They stole all the money. I would, li I would like to request you. This time, the, you the, embezzlers. They, they store all the money? No, most of the money. <laughs> most of the money. I request you the, the hungry money embezzlers. Uh, the thieves, at least this time, take a leave on this so that we can achieve our, our historical dream. Right, Honorable Speaker, before I take leave, we need to to correct the image of our country. We are going to host most of the people all over the world. But when you read in the news concerning Uganda, when another person has been taken away with a drone, others have been in prison for years, the government needs to correct the image of this country. And it should, it should start with release. Thank you. Now, um, now Honorable colleagues, I've been. Uh, I went to Nambore to welcome the CAF technical committee, uh, which assessed the readiness of Nambore and what is being done. And uh, it's one of the reasons as why we won. Because at Nambore, they are doing a great job, and I was there personally. This one I wasn't told. And uh, the things which you saw the delay were on things which were meaning for fitting just, for fitting. And uh, where we received reports of containers which were coming in and all that. But the only thing which I want our record to, we shall check later, is how you were a professional footballer. I didn't even see you in Masaza Cup. <laughs> I know you're a manager. <laughs> Yes, on a vocaster in the mirror. Thank you. Thank you, right honourable speaker. Right honourable speaker, I wish to join everyone to congratulate the government of Uganda. Allow me to congratulate the president of Uganda, the president Fufa. Allow me to congratulate. Uh, the Ministry of Education and Sports, allow me to congratulate the Minister in charge of uh, East Africa, who is none other than Rebecca Aritwara Kadaga. Right, Honorable? I want to say it loud that you have been a blessing to East Africa. And I want to congratulate you more and more. Right, Honorable Speaker? The joint bid led by President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni and the Yaza heads of state was one of its kind as it underscored the leadership of our president and his willingness to work together with other leaders to Uganda and East Africa. We congratulate His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni for spearheading this successful bid. Right Honourable Speaker, it is great for Uganda to have the opportunity to host, to host AFCON 2027 in collaboration with Kenya and Tanzania, as this will exploit the unifying power of sports and bring about more harmony, foster tourism, and 
talent development in our region. Uh, of recent, you had the Minister for Sports crying loud why Kigezi has not been uh, involved in sports. I think I want to congratulate you, Honorable Minister. This is what we've been lacking, and from now we, we promise to participate fully uh, if you continue doing this. Right, Honorable Speaker, we express our delight at the AFCON returning to East Africa for the first time since Ethiopia hosted it in 1976. Imagine, I was not in existence then. And warmly congratulate everyone who played a role to make sure our country and East Africa <laughs> secure this rare opportunity deserve congratulations. I want to continue congratulating ourselves. I want to continue congratulating you, the speakers of our country, and I want to congratulate everyone in you. Thank you. Honorable Mushema. As my colleagues have pointed out, hosting an international event is indeed a blessing. I support this motion for three reasons. And these reasons are in the context of opportunities. The point has been made, and I want to reinforce it. When a country has been given an opportunity to host, it is motivated, and I dare say, it is forced to improve on the infrastructure. This is our opportunity. The second reason is in the context of improving our economy. During the budget process, the debate is usually on the expenditure service delivery. Yet, the side of income is very critical. Statistically, we know that tourism has high investment return. So it is an opportunity for the East African countries to reap more through tourism, through trade, through more interaction. On regional integration, this is an opportunity, as we usually say, to widen, deepen, and tighten the integration. This is an opportunity for us, as we host, to tighten integration. Finally, Uganda is very well known for its Pan-Africanism credentials. It is an opportunity again to show a case how Pan-Africanist we have been. For some of us who have been exposing on the ideology of Pan-Africanism, this is an opportunity to demonstrate how hospitable, how Pan-Africanist we are. I second the motion. Thank you. Uh, and you will do only two minutes each so that I can have, can pick a big number. Let me start from here. I come like this. Don't mind whenever you yeah, I'll start with uh, Pasco Wekuna. Uh, a big foreign affairs. Okay. And then Mbarara uh, uh, witnessed the first meeting that we had. I'm going to pick you, Mohone Wekuna. Let's do quickly so that we take as many as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm Babas Pasco. I represent Wekula County. Mwende district. First of all, I support the, the motion with the following reasons. Uh, allow me, Mr. Speaker, to congratulate all Ugandans, including His Excellency the President, who is one of the ringleaders to make sure that Uganda takes effort in bidding for hosting Africa Cup of Nations in 2027. Uh, uh, ring leaders are usually associated with crime uh, and, and demonstration. I expand it. But, no, 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 it's okay. We've, we've known the context. Uh, Mr. Speaker, much as we are excited and we are so happy, but it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of energy, a country like Uganda, and attention to be recognized as one of the hosts for this mighty tournament. 
I'll give you an example as earlier on, one of the colleagues talked about Cameroon had a chance in 2019, but was stripped of the chance to prepare and host the AFCON. So what does this mean? It's high time Uganda embarked on infrastructure development, constructing good stadiums, multipurpose stadiums that will enhance and enable our footballers and other teams that will join here to participate in this mighty... Thank you. Now, uh, honorable colleagues, affirmative action I want to do. I have seen, I, I have compiled a list of MPs who are, uh, who are ranked, and uh, most of them were complaining uh, that uh, they've spoken less or have never spoken. I have the list here. I'm trying to scan around. But, but the unfortunate bit, they are not here. I, I want it to go on record for their constituents to know. Okay? So, so those who are there, please, uh, you will... Uh, <laughs> okay? So, so that, I, I, because I have a problem. MPs are saying, I don't cast the speaker's eye. I don't, but recently, and, and I want it to be on record here, Recently, I had nine members in my office. A member entered, and he brought me a document. And he wanted me to sign for him, that to give him a trip, he has others travel. So, but I had never seen him. The man was shady, was in some jeans, that, and uh, so I, I said, but is this a member of parliament? Uh -huh. Then, I asked colleagues who were here, I said, colleagues, does any one of you some of the colleagues who were, uh, who were in my office that day see them here. Everyone said, I have never. I called the right honorable speaker. I said, uh, have you ever met a member called so and so? The member, no. Okay? But a member also complains, I never cast the speaker's eye. So, now, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm giving notice. I have a list. Because I got it from the paper. Tomorrow, I will, when we open debate on matters, I will be calling names of members who have never spoken. So that your people know you don't come here. It's not that we deny you a chance, but you don't come here. So I've given notice. If you reach out to them, please do. But if you know you're among those ones, please, uh, <laughs> today I give you an opportunity. Okay. So, Honorable Angura. Right, Honorable Speaker. I join my colleagues to second the motion. Right, Honorable Speaker, I second the motion and join my colleagues to congratulate uh, the Pamoja bid, congratulate His Excellency the President and his colleagues uh, from the, the region for successfully pulling out this. I also want to thank the uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank the Right Honorable Speaker. When I saw you jumping and joining the FUFA president in that celebration, I also raised my thumb up. This is an opportunity for us this time to showcase that Uganda not only has the talent, but is also able to prepare and prepare a very successful uh, tournament here. I only want to request you colleagues, we need this tournament this time to be as successful as we have prayed for long to host it. We need to work very hard as a nation. We need to provide resources and support resources to the managers. We have thanked the organizers as among others uh, the National Council team that is up there. We have also thanked the FUFA president who is there, and all other people who are interested and who participate in managing and organizing this uh, football. But, right honorable speaker, when it comes to budgeting, we always shy away, and we create situations that don't encourage these people to work very hard to see to it that we identify talent, we put in the necessary infrastructure, and be proud of, of ourselves as a nation, 
when we are recognized as we host this tournament. So I'm aware that I am one of those who are promoting the young talent and time and again trying to build capacity of our young ones by getting them to countries where they can be ex Thank you. Honorable Ruhunda. I salute you and appreciate your support and zeal on this matter. I congratulate uh, for working hard in a dynamic way to see that this becomes a success, of course, with our FUFA president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is still nice looking. Uh, right honourable speaker, I am going just to quickly. First of all, the people of Fort Porto and Toro at large, they have been for many years yearning for Hinga Stadium to be constructed by government, and the president. The Republic of Uganda, he came to Fort Porto and gave this pledge before tens of thousands of the people in Toro. So I want to make it clear to the minister, from your statement, I've seen you talk of Achipua, then you said Bohinga or Hoima. I want you to improve that statement by saying, uh, you, ca you, no, you know we are like Siamese twins with Akipua because we have worked together with Akipua right from the word go. And we have all, everything worked on, it is only money and giving the contract for Akipua and Buhinga. So if you, you, you please to add Hoima, that is another bonus. But please, I, I request you kindly, don't tag us with Hoima that by Hoima Buhinga or Kwaima, that will be disastrous for Thank you. Yes. I want to thank you so much for the opportunity and allow me, colleagues, to congratulate uh, the President of the Republic of Uganda, the President of the Republic of Tanzania and Kenya, and FUFA for the Pamoja bid successful uh, accomplishment. Now, we want to speak and colleagues, this is a golden opportunity for us as a country to hasten our financial and foreign relations. Two, it's time that we set the right priorities in this docket, if we have got to accept. Three, we need to make sure that as a country, as parliament, we are going to appropriate the right finances with all these consecutive financial years in this very docket. Thirdly, we need to come up with quality infrastructure of our stadiums and also as well the industry. Lastly, Hoima City is very close to the airport. And that is one of the factors that was actually considered. So therefore, developing a stadium in Hoima would be very appropriate for this country if we have to be able to, able to achieve best. Thank you so much. Honorable well, colleagues, it's also appropriate to have a stadium in Midoma. So, 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 uh, yeah. so please take note. Okay. Take, take period note. Yes, I had around Dumbara, then on never under. Mine is simple. First, congratulate the government, uh, FUFA. Mbara. <laughs> Apart from Kampala, Mbara is second. And aware, aware that this is a Pamoja beat, right on the speaker, and means of education. You are talking of northern Tanzania. For those people, I don't want to lose focus of the motion. Now, if we are going to show how one part of the country is more beautiful than the other, uh, then uh, some of us will be disadvantaged and no one will be there to fight for us. So I would request that indeed uh, we appreciate the beauty of each and every part of Uganda, but we focus on the motion. So I'm just... Uh, Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Th then I will do Butemba. Then I go to Andrew Oranya. Allow me to join my colleagues in congratulating the President of Uganda, Government, the Ministry of uh, Education and Sports, FUFA, uh, for the successful bid of the East African Pamoja of COM 2027. Right, Honorable Speaker, 
true as it's not a minor achievement, it's a very big achievement for our economy, and as a country, we should embrace for the positives along the way. The infrastructure issue has been mentioned, and I would like to appreciate and also implore the Ministry of Education and Sports to consider balancing uh, the structure and renovation in all different regions, not only in the east or western. It will not only boost the economy, but also inspire the sports fraternities in our different relevant regions uh, in terms of training and participation on the international level. As far as I'm concerned, most of the, current, uh, most of the countries have been able to nurture talent through uh, putting favorable infrastructure in different regions. That's why you see besides the, the top leagues, there are local leagues on the ground level. Not only for football, I would also like to request that they should also consider net netball. Because currently, as I speak, with Alegia, we have our own playing in the Uganda Shikranes as a goal defender. So putting structures in place will also nurture talent and promote more uh, sports talent in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Tanzania for the successful bid. And right on the speaker, I mean, it's our crew from this wonderful bid. Of course, majority of the issues, like the infrastructure development, integration have been talked about, but I also want to bring to the attention of this house that members, none of us is not interested in leisure, fun engagement, and the experience. Ugandans work day and night to host the African Games. It's going to make people relax. And this is very important because uh, a fresh mind will always be. There is also an opportunity that, uh, of course, government is expected to do some improvements in our road infrastructure facilities. Why? Because somebody talked about the international image. And I don't think my government can endure any environment issues are not fixed. And when this is done, even after the AFCON game, we stand to benefit in case there are improvements in medical facilities. Thank you. Honorable Beatrice Sakori. Thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Allow me to convey my heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for steering this country in a productive way. That's why we can get evidence in what is happening in our country. Personally, I'm not a sport lady, but through parliamentary sport and games activity, I'm going to set a record in this country. Which record? In, in 3,500 meters. <laughs> right Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, I want to allay the fears of my Honorable colleague, Honorable Kayemba, about the corruption. I would like to inform him that government has set in place agencies, their structures, handling issues of corruption. So issues of corruption will not arise in this matter. And let me t inform you, honorable members, fighting corruption, fighting corruption is a collective responsibility. It begins with you, all of us, we need to put our feet down to fight corruption. Thank you, I beg to submit. Thank you, honorable Andrew Aranya, then Iwanda, then honorable Nsamba Buturo, then honorable Feta, and honorable Mpindi. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to join my colleagues in congratulating Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya in winning this bid. Uganda hosted Chogam, hosted, is going to host the Pan-African Parliament. My appeal to the government and to the people in charge of this is to make this as inclusive as possible. Let this not be in the hands of a few individuals. It is my prayer that sufficient guidance on the roadmap in terms of how we can tap into the opportunity is given out to the populace. So that is my humble appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wanda. Mr. Speaker and my fellow colleagues, I stand here to support the motion of the, Af the Af Pamoja bid. And I can't forget to congratulate the President of the Republic of Uganda for this successful bid, uh, not forgetting the FUFA and the sport 
and other sports fraternity. The African bid has come with a lot of benefit, especially for our youth. Inspiring our youth, as you may be aware, that sports is part of the employment. It's also, it boosts the employment, and this is going to come with that benefit. So really, I stand with gratitude, with gratitude and support for this bid, because I know it's going to boost our economy and also add on that disadvantaged uh, opportunity that the youth has always put on, on flow of unemployment. Because it inspires, and I know it will be so grateful for the country. And also neighboring countries, as far as tourism is concerned, we are going also to have that benefit of tourism. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity, and thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Honorable. Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I also want to join colleagues to congratulate Uganda as a country but also to thank His Excellency the President and all the leadership, including you, Sir Mr. Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I also want to thank the President of FUFA and his team, because if it was Uganda alone bidding to host this event, it wouldn't be easy. But for that good working relationship with colleagues within the region that made them join jointly a bid for this, it is an indicator that they are working together. I want to appeal, uh, right honorable speaker, to Parliament, that we are celebrating this victory, but it goes with a lot of money. And this money must be appropriated by this Parliament. This issue of giving money at the last minute may cause us problems like that, those problems that happened in, in the in Cameroon. So we need to, to, to give out money, the money that is needed, so that this process is uh, done in time. But also to appeal to members here and outside this parliament that this bid is for all of us Ugandans. We should not turn it political. Let us support it. Let us support everything. Let us uh, mobilize our people because everyone is going to benefit in this. I thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Thank you. Honours. In thanking the President for leading this struggle, but I also want to thank you and our President of FUFA. In the celebrations, I saw the spirit of togetherness and the spirit of achievement after a very long struggle. I want to thank the leadership of this Parliament for that leadership. Right Honourable Speaker, this Pamoja bid, as a result, of the spirit of comradeship in East Africa. I want to appeal that we take this on so that next time we're able to work together as a team. Two, Uganda as alone will not be able to manage because of the infrastructural challenges that have been raised here. In 2005, a Uganda in the names of Doka Sinjikuru won the steeplechase 3,000 meters. And in honor of that person, the council of Arua district named Barifa Stadium after her. And government pledged to construct a stadium called the Dokas in Jikuru Stadium. Eighteen years later, there's not even one coin spent there. I want to take this opportunity to ask the minister, what plan does your ministry have in this concern? Because the region has the second busiest airport in this country, it is lying idle. We're not using it. If you had constructed a stadium there, we'd be able to host this, this, this game from there. But by and large, I want to thank all the stakeholders for playing a dedicated, a patriotic role in doing this. This shows that this country... Thank you. Honorable Kazimi. Oh, yes. Okay, come like team there, which I want to talk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the and opportunity. I do like this. First of all, I want to thank God for blessing Uganda with an opportunity of hosting the AFCON. I also want to thank the President and his counterparts for allowing their countries to host this important game. It is a real an achievement for our country. 
is an achievement for the Ugandans. I must thank the Ugandans for, because they have been praying for it. However, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that uh, Uganda cannot be complete without Bunyoro, and Bunyoro has got its history. I therefore request that the Honorable Minister does whatever it takes and ensure that Hoima Stadium is considered because of its historical background. King Kavalega was a historical king, and uh, every Ugandan who studied the history knows it. I therefore that we consider all the stadiums as stated in the statement, Akiba, Mohinga, and Ibonyoro. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Tungamo. Thank you so much, Right Honorable. It is a clear manifestation of the East African spirit. And no wonder it is named Pamoja, which is a Swahili word, meaning it is therefore my support that this bid should be a, an eye-opener for economic transformation of this country and the entire region. I thank you. Thank you. Power of unity. What really this situation has been uh, issue, Mr. Speaker, is my concern. The scenario project in time and Uganda does it. Simply because the disease that has really damaged us takes over. And I am appealing to government, Mr. Speaker, that we deal punitively with those officials who are likely to interfere with the progress, the construction that we want to see in our country up to 27. That is the greatest danger we face, Mr. Speaker, that some of our officials are dishonest and they are looking forward to stealing resources this nation government would have put in place. Mr. Speaker, that is a huge matter of concern. Otherwise, I do welcome uh, the success we've had. I want to commend our president, his colleagues, and all those who were uh, part of this big story we are discussing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Issues will be addressed, especially the issues of roads, the issues of having better hotels will be handled. So the remaining term will be support us as members of parliament. Support your members of parliament that we must work hard in our constituencies so that because this tournament is going to be in 2027, I am speaking through experience. Accidentally, if you don't make in 2026, by the time people are celebrating, you will be hiding yourself in your houses. I've ever gone through it. When you fail, it's. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I've already picked the members to speak. Right Honourable Speaker, there are lessons to learn from this. One is the proactiveness. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, as a country, we need to ensure that we increase in our revenue so that the infrastructure development of this country is enhanced comprehensively, regardless of having opportunities first. Two, right honorable speaker and colleagues, we need to proactively develop the sub-regional centers for any opportunity to come. Because there's now competition between the cities and the sub-regional centers. And we all need to develop as a team, as all the sub-regions in this country. Therefore, when it comes to budgeting, right honorable speaker, I pray that your guidance is taken seriously, that the areas which are never developed, which are, fairly, which are not fairly developed, are also targeted, because we need to embrace development as a team, and we need to have the budget, and we cannot have these monies without increasing our revenue. Thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker. On, on behalf of the country, and uh, in terms of financing all the required you know, items and facilities for, for AFCON. So we shall work together very closely with the Committee on Education and Sport. We are going to ensure that indeed that money is provided. We are going to, because that commitment which I made on your behalf, this was the biggest fear on the issue of financing 
Some countries have taken the opportunity and they end up not doing it. We don't want to embarrass our colleagues in the region. They meet their part of the bargain. But what I discovered on our colleagues, uh, when we were interacting with the Minister of Sport from Kenya, he told us, he said, look, for him he's sorted. Every year he's assured of 15 billion Kenya shillings. That's over 100 million dollars. That's over 370 billion. From a tax they put on betting and rotary. These people, a sports fund, this money billions which are taken out, which are taken out uh, through uh, betting, rotary, where our people are selling their border borders, are selling. This is an area which other countries have targeted to develop their sports sector. Okay? So yesterday I had a chat uh, with the direct economic monitoring in the Ministry of Finance to look at that issue, like uh, how other countries are doing it. So that we don't only beg and all that. Companies make billions out of our children, including even school fees. They take the billions and we leave our sports subsector and not help. So we are going to be looking at most of these areas. Busia? As an athlete and a footballer, I have to say something on this motion. But since we have three years to 226, I'm very aware that we shall have fixed these gaps. Right, Honorable Speaker, allow me to talk about tourism. This Where it includes the construction of Hoima Stadium. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank everyone who has made a contribution to the successful bid of this tournament, uh, particularly the Sports Fraternity, uh, the president, your office, uh, and indeed the office of the Minister for East Africa, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, these points all show us where we should put our energies as leaders of this country, that we need to invest more time in leadership towards cooperation, leadership towards uh, integration, uh, making sure that we stop being uh, Uganda, become East Africa, become African, and uh, we become stronger. Right, Honorable Speaker, as this tournament is drawing near, or as we prepare, we also have to prepare for the negatives that are likely to come with it. Uh, my mind was drawn to an event that happened at World Cup, where one country flew in with a, a, a plane carrying the flag of uh, homose promoting homosexual, uh, homosexuality. Uh, we, uh, they had to tell them to return, remove the flag, and come back. We must be prepared as a country who has put our stamp on the ground that we shall not allow such activities here. Warn the participating countries and even uh, those who are coming to, to watch that this will not be tolerated in this country. Terrorism. Thank you, Honor. That we as Ugandans should embrace unity. We should embrace unity because it is sports that brings us together, right, Honorable Speaker. I have seen several negatives in, on social media by young people. I want to call upon all Ugandans to desist from this. People are going to benefit from these sports activities that we are going to host here, right, Honorable Speaker. Young people are going to do business in transport. People are going to do business in food. So this is something that is going to uplift our economy. Let us stand strong, embrace it, and let every Ugandan support it. Whether you support government or you don't support government, let us stand together in this. Because this is something that is going to unite us, keep us together, and is an opportunity that has come once in a very long time, right Honorable Speaker. Right on week, I just wanted to add my voice in the area of unity. Clarification. Thank you, Right on Speaker. I wanted to add my voice, but I'd given. Yeah, let him ask, seek gratitude. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity also to thank you and the team you led to Cairo. I want to, there is something I wanted to clarify. The Honorable Siruan said there are negative comments on social media.
There are no negative comments on social media. Every Ugandan welcomed this bid and we are ready to host this uh, tournament in Uganda. Therefore, when the Honorable Osirwani says that there are negative comments, people watching there who gave us this tournament who say Uganda did not welcome this tournament, no, there are no negative comments. Today. Thank you. Now, uh, Thank you. what I'm picking from Honorable Kabanda is that some Ugandans were cautioning us. Okay? Not uh, to abuse this opportunity and we embarrass our country. Okay? So, so but everyone will come. Well, uh, Thank you very uh, much. Apart from uh, the one called Mavirizi who said he's going to court. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rajiro I wanted to give the Honorable Kabanda that information of such Ugandans like Th them. Thank Okay. Much obliged and thank you so much and let us stand together and united we stand and win a gun cup of nations. Thank Isha you. Allah. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I add my voice to whoever has congratulated all those that participated in having Uganda host the AFCON 2027. Right Honorable Speaker, there is no international gathering, there is no international conference, there is nothing that can have a crowd that can be equated to the crowd that we can pull when we are hosting games. Right Honorable Speaker, in 2027 I'm very sure Uganda is going to host people that it has never hosted, it's going to have a population that will really disorganize the whole setup of Uganda. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is the time we have three years to prepare for this. Right, Honorable Speaker, I've seen colleagues here coming to say the stadium should be in Fort Porto, should be in Hoima, should be where. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is, an, this is not an event for Kampala alone. It's not an event for Fort Porto, neither Hoima. This is an event for Uganda as a whole. We need to see Minister of, Minister of, of Education coming to, 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 to do some work for Bugembe Stadium, so that when a country comes, they go for training from Jinja, they stay there for two days as they prepare to come and play from Nambole or Nachivubo. Not to have all countries in Kampala alone, as if Mbale is not waiting, as if Jinja is not waiting. So this is an opportunity for every region to benefit. Let it not be centralized in Kampala as if they have only come to visit Kampala. We want every region to benefit in whichever formula. We have seen countries jetting in five days in advance, a week in advance, 80 days. You take them to Mbale, take them to Gulu, take them to Mbarara, so that they train from there. Those people will benefit from different sectors. So, right on. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, right on. Allow me to join uh, my colleagues in thanking the President of the Republic of Uganda, Parliament, FUFA, that has worked so hard to deliver this Pamoja bid. Right Honorable Speaker, Pamoja bid has come at the right time that as a country we've been struggling to even qualify for the matches. Many of our young talents have gotten a huge opportunity to showcase their talent and attract bigger clubs. In the wake of this, I want us to be aware of the words by the CAF president. He said, whereas this has been given to East Africa, it can also be taken back. I want to draw attention to 2020 when Uganda as a country withdrew from hosting the AFCON beach soccer. This calls for our unity in preparing for what is needed to host these games. Uh, again, our focus as a country should be on the readiness of our national carriers. Or shall we wait for 2027 and all the, uh, the bids for transporting the players across the East African region is done by other airlines. Yet as a country, we are blessed with Air Uganda. The other aspect is the issue of standard gauge railway. Standard gauge railway, when we have matches here, 
and uh, in other in Kenya or Tanzania how are we going to transport our supporters thank you honorable mede congratulate the government for winning the bid for afcon as a member of the government assurances committee i would just want to reemphasize because we are grappling with gaps in executing government programs or projects to maximize the benefits that come with this tournament. We need timely execution of uh, all the infrastructure enhancements. This will only be possible if roles are given on merit. Honorable Minister, please advertise 